Hey everyone, it's Snow Music back here again with another video. Today's tutorial is going to be all about key commands. I'll be explaining what key commands are, what governs key commands in Logic Pro, and how to assign key commands. So if you're interested, let's dive in. What are key commands? So key commands are essentially shortcuts that allow you to perform specific functions within Logic Pro. They work by either pressing a single key or a combination of keys on your keyboard. Key commands are useful because they help save you time in performing specific functions. In layman's terms, I could drag my mouse all the way to the window um, tab here on the very top, and then I could click open mixer, or I could save all that time and just click command two on my keyboard, and I have the mixer right away. The same thing could be said about other functions in Logic Pro. For example, if I wanted to open up my editor, I could either go to view and click editor, or I can simply hit E on my keyboard and my editor will be available on the bottom. I can also hit E again to hide my editor. If I wanted to, let's say, mute this piano roll track, I could click M on my keyboard and be muted, or if I want to solo it, I can click S. All in all, key commands do save you a lot of time and a lot of moving your mouse around on your screen to perform specific functions. One important thing to note is that the function of a key command depends on what area of the DAW you're working in. For example, if you're working in your main arrangement area here, hitting Y would open up the library. Similarly, I can hit Y again to hide the library. Now let's say I was working in my step input keyboard. So to open my step input keyboard, I would hit Option Command and K. And here we have the step input keyboard. Now if I hit Y, it's actually going to create a G sharp MIDI note. And if we open up the editor here by clicking our trusty um, E key, we, we'll see what node is actually created. So hitting Y, we'll create a G sharp note. Another thing to note is that let's say if I was working within my tool selector, so I hit T to open up my tool selector and I hit Y, that is going to give me the zoom tool. So it's therefore important to be cognizant of what area within Logic you're working in when you hit a specific key command. I'm just gonna revert back to what I had before in my original window, I had a library, delete that MIDI region. Now let's talk about what governs key commands in Logic Pro. So in Logic Pro, key commands are governed by the key command editor. This essentially dictates what keys are assigned to a specific command. To get the key command editor, you can navigate here by clicking Logic Pro in the top left and then scrolling down to key commands. Notice you have some presets as well. But if you go to edit, this is going to bring up the key commands editor. Another way to do this is you can actually use the key command to open up the key command editor, which is going to be option K. And it saved you like two additional steps. Let's go over all the different aspects of the key command editor. So here you have the specific command or function that's being performed. Here you have the keys in this tab that uh, those are assigned to. And if you have a touch bar, let's say you're working within a MacBook that has a touch bar, you can see what uh, specific um, uh, function is assigned to a part of the touch bar. And if you have a an external controller, like a MIDI controller or a B-pad, you can see what um, parameter is governed by one of those controls. If you hover over any of these here, it'll actually tell you what that, um, what that specific button or part of the touch bar is. So this is touch bar button five, and this one is controller assignment number two. I guess that one doesn't hover. Um, if you click it, if you click any of these functions, you can also get more information on the right hand side here. So it'll tell you what specific part or sorry controller it is assigned to it'll tell you which part of the touch bar it's assigned to and it'll tell you which keyboard key command that it is assigned to right but ones that don't have any specific assignments let's say record repeat it's not going to show anything but notice the record one has all three so that was a good example to use Another important thing to note here as well is remember before I gave the example of the Y key on your keyboard being assigned to multiple functions depending on which part of the DAW you use it in. 
So what you're gonna see here is these squares. So these squares essentially dictate, um, not dictate, but more so tell you what has a higher priority depending on what part of the DAW you're using it in. So hovering over the pause button, if I was to, let's say, um, use the pause button in my DAW, right now the velocity 112 in step input keyboard has a higher priority over this general global command for pause. So that essentially means if you have the step input keyboard open and you hit the pause um, key command, it's not going to perform the pause key function. It is going to perform velocity 112 function, which takes priority over this global pause command. Functions are organized over here in the command tab based on what area of the DAW they're being used in. So these are my global commands. If I scroll all the way down, you're going to see that you have a bunch of different ones available to you. So let's say if I was working within my tool selector like I did before, these are the key commands that are going to govern what specific tool I select. And similarly over here as well, if I had my smart tempo editor open, um, these are going to be the key commands for that. Notice that here the squares are solid. Uh, in the front, whereas before they were kind of transparent. So this essentially means that these ones have a higher priority, whereas the um, solid squares in the back, such as, just scrolling all the way up here, these ones mean that these have a lower, lower priority. You also have tabs on the top here that allow you to filter through like, or sort through uh, different areas of the editor. So if you wanted to go to all your key commands that are available to you, you would click all. If you only wanted to look at key commands that are being used, you would click use. It's notice it's not going to show any um, key commands that are empty. Everything's going to have an assignment to it. So all these functions are going to be assigned to a specific key command. Now if you wanted to go to key, obviously nothing is really going to change here. Um, but if you want to go to touch bar, these are going to show you all the different um, functions that are assigned to a touch bar. If you want to go to unused, these are going to be all of your uh, functions that are not yet assigned to any key command or any touch bar parameter. Over here in the customize tab, you have the ability to sort through all your custom key commands and multi-used here. Whoops, let's deselect those. Used, multi-used. So multi-used essentially shows you key commands that have more than one function, depending on what area of the DAW you're using it in. And notice all of these ones have the squares. So these squares dictate um, what priority these key commands take, depending on what area of the DAW you're using it in. And here you have conflicts. So conflicts are essentially when there's conflicting key commands in the same areas. So that's all right for me right now. I'm going to leave those conflicts. I'll sort it out at a later time. The last one of these tabs at the top I want to talk about is the press tab. So if I click that, and now I hit any key on my keyboard, it's going to show me what function that key is assigned to already. So now if I hit command on my keyboard, it's going to show me all the command key assignments. If I hit command and shift at the same time, it's going to show me all the command shift assignments and so on and so forth. And this allows you to find um, key combinations that are not already assigned to a specific function. So if I hit Command Shift L, I can hit, I can see, sorry, that uh, this is not currently assigned to any function. Same thing with uh, Command Shift C, that's not going to be assigned to any function. Uh, Command Shift um, C question mark, that's not going to be assigned to any function. But Command Shift M, that is going to be assigned to a function. Command Shift N is going to be assigned to a function. Command Shift B is going to be assigned to a function. So this allows me to see which um, keys or combination of keys are assigned to a function and not assigned to a function. Now the reason I want to talk about the press key um, so you can see which key combinations are not assigned to a specific function is because now we're going to dive into how to actually go about assigning key commands to a specific function. So first let's see which key commands aren't being used right now. So let's say I want to assign something to the step editor. I'm going to click that specific function. 
and I'm going to click learn by key position here. Okay. So now the next thing I want to do after I click those two things is choose a combination of keys on my keyboard that I want that to be assigned to. So I know from the pressed um, tab that command shift L is not currently assigned to anything. So I'm going to hit command shift L on my keyboard. And now notice that in the unused tab, it's not there. But if I go to used, right, or even if I go to pressed and I was to hit command shift L, I'll see that show or hide step editor is assigned to command shift L. So now exiting out of the key command editor, if I had command shift L on my keyboard, it's going to open the step editor right here. And it's as simple as that. So that is how you go about assigning key commands in Logic Pro. I hope this video has given you a thorough rundown of key commands, what they are, how to use them, how to filter them, and how to assign them. If you did like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps out my channel. Make sure you comment and subscribe as well if you want to see more content, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.